if you notice the lead is not where it should be. Now there's a lot of cat people out there, but there's a type of cat person that might have to learn really quickly how to deal and live with their cats so that they don't destroy all of their valuables. Welcome back to the channel everyone and uh, today I want to talk about a specific particular cat person that has a lot of equipment around and uh, that cat person is usually the gamer sort of tech enthusiast cat person where they love gaming they love um, all things tech but with tech comes a lot of cables comes with a lot of sensitive parts and I'm that type of person now if you look around at my desk you can see I have a lot of um, different things I have headphones I have uh, recording equipment I have watches I have VR equipment I just have a lot of things around my table that is uh, quite sensitive and very likely to be damaged if the cats wanted to play with it and yet everything is fine you know everything is intact but um, uh, the first time cat owner that might not have much experience with cats put them together with a Bengal or a very high energy cat then that might turn into a really big problem if he's also a tech enthusiast like me. So this video guide is to help all the gamers and techies out there to try to achieve some harmony between your cats and your technology. So how can you create a cat proof gaming and uh, computer office area? First, the organization of the area takes priority. Cables, dust and hair prevention measures, and keeping valuables out of your cat's line of sight. This is then followed by uh, making sure they can't turn off or press anything accidentally. And then lastly, designing the area to be more cat centric so they don't have to keep stepping on your computer table all the time, risking knocking things over and interrupting your stuff. Now, the first step of organization is to keep all of the loose small stuff inside a drawer or cabinet. Now, we know cats love to play with this small stuff, but if they keep finding this kind of stuff, around your computer table, on your computer desk, then they're going to keep coming back thinking this is a source of fun. So we really want to uh, make sure that this doesn't become a habit. The next thing to organize are computer cables, um, any cables actually, and it doesn't have to be 100% neat and hidden away, but at least it should be hard to get to for your cats. If your cat has already started to damage the cables, once again, try to move them into a more difficult spot for the cats to get to. Um, maybe pinpoint a part where they really like to bite and spray some bad tasting um, pet deterrent on the cables themselves uh, so that when they do bite it, they don't want to come back for a second bite because it tastes horrible. Some people also use um, pet cord protectors. It's just a plastic cover that um, insulates cords and protects your pets from chewing through the cords. Um, these are things that other people have used. I don't need to use them because my um, cats are pretty trained not to bite these cables but it's still good to know that they exist and uh, it's just another tool for us to ensure the safety of our cats and to protect our equipment at the same time i want to take this moment to say if you're enjoying my video please subscribe to my channel um, where i have much more uh, information about how to live with your cats in smaller spaces and link down in the description is uh, a free article where i go much more into detail about how to cat proof your um, working area and gaming station um, and what kind of products to look out for when buying your equipment thanks and uh, let's get on with the video now you've done all your organization now it's time to minimize um, cat hair and dust from getting into the computer and getting onto your computer peripherals and components this includes uh, mice keyboards um, headphones anything that's out on the desk that um, hair can get on top of now let's start first with our computer tower itself. Most techies and gamers will know that dust and hair can cause a lot of problems in a computer system, overheating and that sort of stuff. So it's best to minimize it when we can. And the first thing to do is invest in a computer case or tower with a lot of dust filters. Most of the fans on your computer should be covered with a dust filter. The back exhaust fan doesn't need to be covered, but the rest of the fans do to minimize any dust that is being taken in. 
For laptops, they generally have quite small fans, so you don't really need to have dust filters on them. Every so often, it's good to give them a little bit of a blow from a, a compressed air can to clean out the dust that's inside of the laptop. If it's not possible to do the things that I mentioned right now, a very well-known tip within the computer community is to keep your computer tower or laptop as high as possible, like on your desk, on a platform, on a shelf, so that it, it avoids all of the dust that settles on the ground and it gives your cats less access to your computer. Now, if you look at my computer setup, my computer is on the ground. However, I have a little bit of a platform to avoid uh, all of the dust that's on the floor. And uh, I have a lot of filters on my computer, including other modifications that I'm going to speak about very soon. Now, let's talk about computer peripherals and accessories. Keyboards, computer fans, and mice are usually the first to be affected by dust and hair. And one of the best things you can do with dust and hair is to get an air purifier. Since dust and hair are quite light particles, they tend to fly around in the air for an extended period of time before actually landing on something. Therefore, an air purifier will likely trap a portion of these particles, sparing you a good bit of cleaning. The next thing to make sure of is to make a habit of putting away your equipment and peripherals under something. Uh, things out in the open are subject to everything in the air landing on it. Again, the dust, hair, even liquids. And cats are also more likely to interact with it. For example, sitting on your keyboard, sitting on your laptop, or uh, even biting some antennas. You know, just general physical interactions if it's out in the open. My mouse and keyboard are on a tray under the computer, so it's a simple act of sliding it under the desk when I'm finished. The headphones and other equipment are under racks and cupboards, and even my monitor acts as a place to store equipment that I don't want to be messed around with by the cat. Now let's say you're totally immersed in a game or you're writing an important document, and then all of a sudden, black, your cat has just suddenly turned off your computer. For a lot of people, there is no bigger pain. My cats accidentally pressing the power button happened at least once a week when I finally decided that I had enough and decided to find some cat proofing solutions for it. Now, if you have the choice, choose a computer case with the power buttons on the side or on the front of the case, not on top of the tower. However, most computer cases these days, especially if they're a bit smaller, will have computer buttons on the top. And if your computer button is on the top and your computer um, case is below your desk, well, welcome to a world of pain if you didn't cat proof it. Now, there are a lot of ways you could actually fix this, but the easiest fix that I had to make was to take something thick and cylindrical like this ring and put it over the power button. The cats will avoid it for the most part, and uh, any accidental clicks and depresses of that power button will hopefully be solved or at least massively reduced in frequency. Just make sure that the sides are tall enough so the cat's paws don't brush by it easily. Uh, and if you don't have a ring thick enough, I imagine even a bottle cap or a medicine cap would be similarly as effective. And then just attach it with some double-sided sticky tape like I did with this ring. Now the last part is to cat proof your cats. Cats are going to be cats and uh, there are companions, but at the end of the day, they're made to hunt. So they're frequently going to use their claws and teeth. So it's good to um, trim their claws every couple of weeks. For stopping bad biting habits, this is more of a behavioral guidance and uh, than anything physical that we can do for your cat. Have things that cats can bite around in the form of um, toys or matatabi sticks and give your cats daily playtime to let them expend their energy rather than them trying to find something to um, occupy themselves with. Because it's as I always say, a tired cat from play is a well-behaved cat. And a bored cat is generally a pretty destructive cat. On my channel, I've already made videos about how to stop your cats from biting and how to properly play with your cats so that you can tire them out uh, so they learn what is proper to play with and what is not proper and i'll link that here for you in the description and probably on this video somewhere so once again increase their environmental and physical stimulation and increase the amounts of elevated spaces around your computer area 
Now, we see countless um, memes and pictures of cats on keyboards and on the computer table. But really, if you look around, there isn't really any other surface that they can be. If there's only one place that they can jump on to observe whatever it is that you're doing, they're going to jump there. And uh, usually that is the computer table. So a couple perches or even another chair being available there would make a big difference. Cats would likely be satisfied with being there rather than on the computer table itself. So that's it. I hope this has helped um, preventing any accidents that might happen and uh, help you be a little bit more productive in your home um, or apartment. If you like this video, please subscribe and uh, visit my website for more articles and guides on how to live with your cats in small apartments and living spaces. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.